Welcome to my first unboxing video. And what we're going to be unboxing today is a Nano VNA. So I've only been aware of these things for about six months. And since I, I tend to get into antenna theory and building, occasionally I thought this would be a nice tool to add to my collection of tools. And uh, it should be very useful for checking antenna, SWR, and residence. And uh, another thing I'm going to use this for is at some point I'm probably going to build or and or modify a solid state linear amplifier for HF. And I need something to test low pass and band pass filters. So this should do the job. It, uh, it has a capability. And for, uh, for those who don't know, VNA stands for Vector Network Analyzer. And pretty cool little tool. This was less than 60 bucks on Amazon. Classy little box. I like it. And I got some instructions here. I'll deal with those in a minute. So this is our device. It's very tiny, as you can see. My wife would hate me doing that. She always leaves those on. And I always peel them off. So this is our device. It's got these little protective caps on here. Pretty neat. And uh, let's see if it'll power up. Yeah, instantly powered up. So it's going to charge. And it doesn't have much of a charge. I see about a 30% charge on it. So whatever I do, I'm going to have to do relatively quickly. So let me turn that off for now. And we have, looks like a USB charging cable. That's a common micro USB or USB-C, I'm not sure. That's the same as my current Android phone, so that'll be handy. I have a little stylus. I've heard that these screens don't work very well with your fingers, so a stylus might be mandatory. And let's see, what do we have here? We have another charging cable with a different style USB. It's just a mini USB micro USB on both ends. Set that aside. Here we have a couple female to female jumpers, which will come in handy. This is just a strap to hold it with. Here we have a very tiny little barrel connector. Set that over there. For some reason, these are under. A little plastic tray and I'm assuming that one of these is going to be an open one of these will be a short and one of them will probably be 50 ohms dummy load and that's for calibration purposes so okay we'll set this aside and uh, I've already got a couple of these this is just a PL259 to SMA, SNA adapter. So these will work very nicely to attach the Nano VNA to whatever antenna I happen to be testing. It should work just fine. But first step is to calibrate. So let's see if I can figure out how to do that. little frequency jogging button on the top here. I'm going to reset, reset cow change. 
calibrate. See if I can figure out which one of these is the short, which one is the open. So that's just an open pen, so that'll be our open. So I'm betting that that will be our 50 ohm load because that's a different color. So let's run with that, see if we're right. So open first, there's no center pin in there at all. I'm not sure why you can't just leave this disconnected and call that open circuit, but they gave us that for a reason, so we'll run with that. Okay, one down, two to go. Okay, and now we'll go with our short. And I should mention you're not really supposed to spin the barrel connector into the cable like I just did that. It's not the right way to do it. You should be holding this firm and then just spinning the ferrule on. And now we'll do load. And there we go. And we're calibrated. So, okay. Um, let's give this thing a test on a real antenna. So, last year I had a 10 meter dipole in the shed and that I was not using that I've had for decades. And I thought, hey, what if I just cut that down to two meters and give it a try? So I did. I cut it down to approximately 19 and a half inches. And I threw it up on the roof, checked the SWR, and it was three to one, a little bit high. So I haven't been using it, and the reception was actually better off the, the built-in antenna on my HT. So I know it's got issues, but I'm just curious if it's resonant anywhere and what the SWR is. So we should be able to set this thing up. At the calling frequency, G M K. Megahertz. Okay. And let's see what that dipole shows on the nano VNA. So let me change my uh, settings here. I did this wrong. We need to have a window here. So let's go. Let's go 152 megahertz, and we'll start. at 142 megahertz. That'll give us a little better window. And now we need to go to the SWR. Uh, 
And I have no idea how to do this. Let's see. Here we go. And clearly I have a bad connection somewhere. And that actually doesn't show too bad. But where are we resonant? That's showing 1.053 1 to 1 at 144 megahertz. And as we go up and get closer to the calling frequency, there's 146. I'm still only 1.082. Not bad. So maybe I didn't have a good connection on my HT. Something is obviously up. I might have to uh, reinvestigate this antenna. It might be okay. But that's basically the usefulness of this tool. Let me check another antenna here. Hang on just a second. Okay, so this particular antenna. This antenna is a 10 meter beam. Let's see how it checks on the Nano VNA. Okay, so I'm going to have to change my frequencies, of course. So let's change that to... Oh, let's say, let's put our lower frequency at 27.500 megahertz. And let's put our higher frequency at 29 megahertz. And there we go. So our yellow line, our yellow line is SWR, and at 29 even, we are showing 2.13. So let's change that. We'll bring that down to the calling frequency on 10 meters. That's pretty close. And we're 1.7 to 1 right there. Not perfect. Obviously this beam is still cut a little bit too long for the middle of the 10 meter band. So that's useful. I can bring it down and I can trim it a little bit and get it better. Let's see where the resonance is on this antenna. Let's bring it down here. So it's resonant at 27.740. So I definitely need to trim the driven element of this beam a little bit to get it centered up. 
I should probably put it right on the calling frequency, so it's something I, I can do pretty easily. You just take one screw out, slide aluminum tubing in equally on both sides and drill a couple holes and stick the screws back in. So, awesome. Pretty cool. So, I do have one more antenna I can check. And last but not least, in the center of my beam, on the mast, I have the top half of a very popular halfway fiberglass antenna. So I just built a bracket and put it right in the middle of the mast on top of the beam. It's a vertical so I can use for mobile work. And I'm curious to see where that one is resonant at. So once again, this time let's do a little broader frequency sweep. Let's go 50 megahertz. And let's say 20 megahertz. And we have to get it to SWR. Format SWR. And there is our curve. I do not see my pointer though. Where is the pointer? And let's broaden this up a little bit. Go to 30 megahertz. That's a little better. So this antenna is resonant. Pretty close to the calling frequency for 10 meters. There's 28,500 right there, and it's 1.3 to 1. That's about as good as it gets. Uh, 27,500, it's almost 2 to 1. And 29,200, it's almost 2 to 1. Not bad. Not very broadbanded, but it'll do the job. So there you have it. Pretty cool little tool for less than 60 bucks. And uh, you can see that this one, most of those nano VNAs are just wafer board with standoffs separating them. I found this one, which is actually in a plastic case, which is nice. Don't have to worry about it getting dirty. I'll put a link to this in the video, or at the bottom, in the text. And uh, keep trying this thing out, keep working with it, and see just what it can do. Um, I'm going to have fun with this little tool, I can tell you that right now. It's pretty useful. Obviously very useful for antenna work, but as I said earlier, it'll also be useful for testing common mode chokes, testing transformers, testing low pass filters, all of that. So pretty cool. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.